Okay, today we're going to look at some flow and velocity calculations, and we're going to do two examples. Um, we're going to look at the flow through a channel and the flow through a pipe. But before we get into it a little bit, I do want to provide some background of when you might be doing these sorts of calculation as a water or wastewater treatment operator. I know a lot of the times when we're studying for these tests, uh, we might be so focused on the numbers and the formulas that we kind of forget the bigger picture of why are we even doing this in the first place. Now, when you get onto site and you become a operator, you're going to be using these calculations almost on a daily basis. So let's take a look at one example of when we might be, you know, looking for flow and velocity. Well, when you're trying to, um, you know, understand the best preliminary treatment process. So for example, we're going to, you know, have an operator who has a grit chamber. And what a grit chamber is, is it removes grit, which is composed of things like sand and gravel. And what's happening in these grit chambers is wastewater is flowing through them. And the operator has to understand the best flow rates, the best velocity to go through these chambers so that the grit, so all the little sand and the kind of solid um, materials end up settling to the bottom. If we go too fast or too slow, the settling might not happen and the grit chamber won't function the way it's supposed to. So that's one example of when we might be uh, using flow and velocity calculations um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, another time we might be using it is, um, you know, to understand how we can prevent settling in gravity sewers and force mains and to calculate things like appropriate chemical dosage. A really good thing to also note is operators, you know, have to calculate flow and velocity because if they have an excessive flow or an excessive velocity in the pipeline, that can accelerate wear over time and that can cause a lot of damage. Now, how do we represent flow? Flow is represented by Q. And the units for flow are always a volume per unit of time. Volume, this could be things like liters, it could be meter cubes, and time, it could be anything as small as second to hour to even day. So there's a lot of different ways we could be representing a uh, flow rate, and it just depends on our application. All right, so let's look at the formulas you're going to be using when calculating uh, when calculating flow and velocity. So there's two types that we're going to see today. The first type is when we're calculating uh, flow through a pipeline. So again, you know me, if you've seen our ever other videos, you know that I'm a very visual person and understanding the visual sides help me understand understand the math side of things. So whenever we're calculating flow through a pipe, flow through a pipe, we know that um, the flow Q is going to be area multiplied by the velocity. Now, what is the area of a pipe? Well, we're going to look at the face, which is a circle. And we know the area of a circle is pi r squared multiplied by the velocity. So this is the flow rate through a pipe. Um, another example that we're going to be looking at today is the, the flow through a the flow through a um, through an open channel. So we can just imagine channel like this and again this is right here is the basic formula for flow rate so again flow is area times velocity and because we're right now looking at the flow through a channel the area is going to be the face so the area is going to be length times sorry this should be d for depth depth multiplied by velocity and that is how you calculate 
a flow through a channel. All right, so now let's look at some problems where we will be applying these, these formulas. All right, so let's look at a problem that uses um, flow rate and velocity and let's, uh, let's, let's actually try just to do some of these questions. So the question is, what is the velocity in meters per second of water flowing through a channel that is 2.5 meters wide by one meter deep if the rate of flow is 0.9 meter cubes per second? Now, whenever I'm doing one of these questions, immediately what I like to do to understand the problem a bit better is kind of draw a diagram of what's going on and fill in the given information onto my diagram. So from what I'm, I'm understanding is we have a channel like this and we have water flowing through it. We're given that it is at a velocity of, or sorry, we're given that it's at a, at a flow rate, so it's Q, of 0.9 meter cubes per second. We're given that the channel is 2.5 meters wide and one meter deep. Perfect. Okay, let's look at the formulas we have. So we know that whenever we're looking for flow rate, Q, we have this formula, which is area multiplied by velocity. Now, this specific case, we are looking at the flow through a channel through a channel and the area of a channel, we're look, gonna look at the face here. This is the area. So the area is area of a channel is going to be the width multiplied by the depth all multiplied by the velocity. Okay, so what are we given? Well, we're given the width, perfect, check. We're given the depth, check. We're given the flow, check. And we're looking for, we're looking for the velocity in meters per second. So this is what we're looking for. So we're gonna have to do some rearranging of the formula to isolate for velocity. Now to do so, to get the width and depth over onto this side of things, we're going to divide both sides of our equation by width and depth. We're going to do that to both sides. And when you do something to both sides of the equation, that means you're not um, impacting the equation. You're just moving and shuffling things around. And when I divide both sides by width and depth, cancels out on this side, which means that velocity is isolated. So now we just have velocity on this side. And then on the other side of the equation, we have the flow rate over the width times the depth. All right, so now um, <clears throat> we can keep going and we can try and see what we have, what we don't have, if we need to do any unit conversions. Well, let, let's check for that. So the width we have is 2.5 meters. The depth we have is one meter and the flow rate through the channel, we have it up here is 0.9 meter cube per second. And this is perfect because look at that. Our units are all the same. So let's plug and solve. So 0.9 meter cube per second, all over the width, 2.5 meters, multiply by the depth, which is one meter, and we end up getting 0 0.36 meters per second, and this is our velocity. So the velocity that we need going through this channel um, is 0 0.36 meters per second. Now this is um, kind of an aside, but we do, I do get asked this sometimes, is how do, you know, you understand that the final answer is in meter cubes per second? Like how are we, how are we dealing with all of this to get this? 
Um, this is what I like to do. You might have a different method, but I like to go, okay, I like to write it out. So I have meter cube per second on top, all over. So I'm going to do all over. We have a meter here multiplied by a meter here. We have no denominator here, so I'm just going to put it as one. Again, remember, whenever you're multiplying units of the same, so we have meter, meter, we're multiplying this. To make it one, it's going to be meter, to make it into one unit, it's going to be meter squared. Because we're multiplying, that means we're going one plus one, it's meter squared. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like now. It's going to look like meter cubed over second, all over meter squared over one. Now, what do we do from here? Well, the technique I use or the trick that I use is I go outside times outside, inside times inside. So I'm gonna go meter cube multiplied by the one, which is just meter cube. And I'm gonna go meter squared multiplied by second. So now we have meter cube at the top, we have meter squared multiplied by second. Whenever we're dividing units that are the same, so we're dividing meter and meter, what are we going to do? We're going to subtract the superscript. So we're going to go 3 minus 2, which is 1. I'm just going to put meter all over second. So remember back here, when we were multiplying them, we added these. We went 1 plus 1 and we got 2. Well, now that we're dividing them, we're going to subtract. So we're going to 3 minus 2, 1. And that's meter over second, which is the same unit that I have here. All right, let's look at another problem. So this question is asking, it is saying, what is the flow in liters per second in a pipe with a diameter of 20 centimeters if the water is flowing at a velocity of 0.5 meters per second. So again, first thing I'm going to do, like I do with every problem, is draw a diagram and try and get a better understanding of what's going on. So we're told that we have water flowing in a pipe. So let's draw a pipe. And uh, we're saying that it is it's telling us that it's flowing at a velocity of 0.5 meters per second. It's flowing through this pipe. And we're also told that the diameter of this pipe is 20 centimeters. So the diameter is 20 centimeters. And they are asking for the flow rate. They're asking for the flow rate. So that is Q. It's Q. What is the flow rate? And they want it in liters per second. So. I immediately know that we are going to be using the flow rate formula and I already know that we are going to have to do some unit conversions. I'm seeing meters, I'm seeing centimeters, I'm seeing liters. So this is going to be a definitely a multi-step uh, problem. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to convert uh, my unit. So I have here uh, a diameter of 20 centimeters. Um, and I want this to be in meters. Now, if you've seen my other um, uh, other problems that we've solved before, you know that I you'll know that I have a trick to convert units, and it is called King Henry died. Mother didn't care much, and this is just a trick to help us remember how to convert meters to centimeters to kilometers. So. This is meter, this is kilometer, hectometer, decameter, decimeter, centimeter, millimeter. And whenever I'm going up from, for example, millimeter to meter, whenever I go up in units, we're going to be dividing by a factor of 10. And when we go down, we're going to be multiplying by factors of 10. So in our case, we want to go from centimeter to meter. So we're going to go up, so we know we're going to be dividing, by how many factors of 10? Well, we're going to go one step, two steps. So that's two factors of 10, or two zeros. So we're going to be dividing our number by 100. So to get my diameter in meters, I'm going to go to the 20 centimeters. I'm going to divide it by 100. I'm going to get 0.20 meter diameter. Perfect. Okay. 
we've done one thing. We've converted our unit here and here in meters. Uh, we know at some point we're going to have to be converting to liters too. Before we do that, let's write the formula for our flow. So flow rate formula is always going to be, flow rate is always going to equal to the area multiplied by the velocity. Now the area in this case is the area of a pipe. So it's going to be the area of the pipe. And this is going to be pi r squared. That's the area of the face of our pipe over here, remember, of a circle is pi r squared multiplied by velocity. Okay, now we want to figure out what can we plug and play. Well, we're given our velocity, so we know this is going to be 0.5 meters per second. Q, flow rate, that's what we're looking for. And we need radius. Now, we don't have radius, but we do have diameter. Now, how do we convert diameter to radius? Well, remember, diameter is the entire length here, and radius is half of that. So if our diameter is 0 0.20 meters, our radius is going to be half of that, which is 0 0.1 meters. So we have this number as well. Okay. Let's solve that. So we're going to go pi, which is 3.14. You should memorize that. Multiplied by 0.1 meter, all squared. Multiplied by the velocity, 0.5 meters per second. Notice that I always, always, in my formulas, I'm still putting my units. This just helps me know that I've converted correctly, and it also reaffirms whether I'm solving and using the right formula because remember our flow rate is going to be always a volume per time. Okay, so we're going to calculate this. We see that it is, I'm just going to put this in my formula, sorry, in my calculator, and we find that it is 0 0.016 meter cube per second. I'm just going to double check that over here. Multiplied by 0.1 all squared. Yes, that is correct. And again, remember what I told you guys about um, whenever we're multiplying the same units. So here we were multiplying uh, meter squared. If you remember here, meter squared, and we're multiplying it by meter per second. So meter and meters are the same, so we can bring them together. Since they're multiplying, that means we're adding the superscript. So it's going to be m, 2 plus 1 is 3, and we still have our second. So that's how we got the meter cube per second. So we found that flow rate is 0 0.016 meter cube per second. Are we done? Almost. We, or If you remember, the question specifically asked us to find the flow rate in liters per second. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to have to do some unit conversions. So this is just something that you should memorize. 1,000 liters is equal to 1 meter cube. So we know that we have 0 0.016 meter cube per second. We want to get rid of our meter cube. So we're going to put this at the bottom, 1 meter cube, and we're going to put this at the top. Multiply by 1,000. Our meter cubes cancel, and we get 16 liters per second as our flow rate. And that is how to solve flow and velocity style questions.